quick. When somebody says to you, what is essential cruising gear? What comes to mind? Anchors? Life jackets? Maybe it's a stove or a refrigerator or water or a shower or a head. Yep, yes, I would argue that all of those are essential, but I think you need to start way smaller than that. Way, way, way smaller than that. Because keeping bugs, especially flies, under control will go very far to improving your quality of life on the boat. Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm talking fly swatters today because, yes, those are absolutely essential cruising gear. Before I get into that, though, I just want to say that Carolyn and I want to invite all of you to come to the Annapolis Boat Show from October 14th to 18th and come see us at the L&L Party Publications booth. It's easily found between the VIP tent and the gin barge. There will be a large The Boat Galley banner helping you find us. Carolyn will be there most of the time, and I'll be there for sure every day between 4 and 6. We would love to say hello and talk to you about what your cruising plans are and if the podcast has helped you. Check the show notes for ticket information. I'm hoping that I can get a discount code that goes in there to help our listeners. Now, back to flies. And hopefully there won't be any of those at the boat show, but maybe I'll make sure that I have a fly swatter just in case. Flies. Everybody warned us about mosquitoes and no CMs, but I have to tell you, nobody mentioned the flies. We've been cruising before. We remembered mosquitoes and no CMs. We didn't remember having a fly problem, but they are a thing, and be prepared. So far, we haven't had to pull out the bug screens since leaving Virginia. Well, maybe once or twice. We've had the occasional mosquito. And we've really loved having our mosquito coil solution, but mostly we've been on the move or anchored in bugless spots. We tend to look and make sure if there is a big marsh nearby, we're pretty sure that that's a pretty good mosquito haven, and so we don't like to totally anchor there. The flies. Since leaving Bridgeport, Connecticut, we've been sailing east along Long Island Sound, and now we're in Rhode Island. The flies have been atrocious. Both the common house fly and the smaller, more agile biting flies. They're not the standard black flies, which are just which are bigger than noceums and pack the world's worst bite, I have to tell you. But there are biting flies that are bigger than that. But between Charles Island and the Thimbles, which is a distance of maybe about 15 miles, we must have killed a hundred or more flies. And honestly, We've taken to leaving a fly swatter in the dinghy. So as we're going exploring, we can whack the flies as we go. We actually stopped at an anchorage in Wickford, Rhode Island the other day and talked to somebody who's on a cruising tug. And they looked down at our dinghy as we were getting in to leave after having a boat tour. And they nodded approvingly and said, clearly, you know what you're doing because you carry a fly swatter in the dinghy. Yeah, they're impossible. They've been the thickest in the early morning and later afternoon. They love the dark stripe on the side of the hull or the tubes of the dinghy as a gathering spot, although there are always one or two that are flying around slowly and always getting right in front of your face when you're trying to do stuff in the galley or having lunch. They land in inaccessible spots on lines or on corners of things. And as soon as you pull out the swatter and it goes swooshing through the air, they disappear. And then they're gone for a little bit because you're ready. You're poised, ready to whack them. Between their preference of landing spots and their love of ankle biting. And Jeremy did not particularly appreciate it when I swatted one good that was landed on his ankle because fly swatters hurt. But it can sometimes be challenging to actually land a killing blow. But I will tell you, keep going. Persevere because there's some grim satisfaction in seeing those black bodies lying still and flat before you gingerly pick them up maybe by a wing and fling them into the water to give the fish some food. You can make fly swatting on the boat a game. There are tools like the bug assault. It looks like a machine gun that you load with regular table salt and then you take aim. They're kind of awesome because they work from a good distance, but they are large. And if you're dealing with a small boat or you've got a lot of stuff around and you don't really want a big plastic machine gun looking thing, you might not want it. 
There is a link to it in the show notes if you wanted to check them out. They're sort of interesting looking. And bug zappers that look like a battery-powered small tennis racket. So if you want to practice your racket skills, complete with some audio effects, you might want to pick up one of those. But I will argue that the best tool for fly swatting is a good old-fashioned fly swatter. You don't need to get the big fancy leather ones, or I think they probably have new ones that are all kinds of weird shapes, but just get a regular old squarish head, plasticky kinds of thing. Get lots of them. We carry three on board. We have one in the dinghy, we've got one down below, and one in the cockpit. And we're actually about ready to buy a few more because there are times when both of us are down below and yeah, we need his and hers fly swatters or we're both in the dinghy. And yeah, it would be great if both of us was using a fly swatter. There are times when it's just the one in the cockpit and we have to remind each other, hey, leave it in the middle so that whoever sees a fly can pick it up and whack. They don't cost much. They don't take up a whole lot of space. And I will tell you, a fly swatter, don't go cruising without one or a lot of them. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you. And hopefully it'll be a fly free anchorage or maybe we'll just have to make the anchorage fly free with our fly swatters. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We would love it if you came up and said hello to us at the Annapolis Boat Show. And we love it when you share us with your friends, because the more people who hear about it, the more information can get shared out to people who are cruising or want to go cruising. Have the most spectacular week.